uh, it, it was interesting, you know, um, I give Microsoft a lot of credit for the consistency that they give that they give uh, Satya, and they they tended to to change it a bit. This was all about the Microsoft uh, cloud, and essentially, what what Satya did is he came up and and talked about essentially talked about uh, four trends and how Microsoft uh, fits uh, uh, fits into this, and essentially, you know. How are businesses being digitally transformed when many were not built to be digital? Uh, he asked questions like, how can business collaborate and connect to the degree to which collaboration connection are accelerated digitally? How businesses are equipped with the tools and infrastructure to innovate? Uh, and then the big question of how does all this digitization, collaboration, and connection and infrastructure, how is it secured? So you get the idea. Not something you wouldn't expect, but uh, it was a little bit different uh, than, than before. I would say the one black and white product that was brand new that I want to talk about is Microsoft Loop. And I, I want to admit something. And I, I do really try to be self-effacing when I don't fully understand something or something sounds complex. Microsoft Loop is essentially, think of them as blocks of code or blocks of applications. Uh, and there are three essential part, loop components, pages, and loop workspaces. Essentially, these are blocks of applications that uh, can work anywhere uh, in, in the Microsoft uh, in environment, whether it's Dynamics, uh, whether it's Office, whether it's in OneNote, whether it's uh, in, in, in Outlook. Um, and that was absolutely um, the new one. It, and Loop reminds me of this, like a Canvas experience with the capabilities of like a tag system with dynamic uh, uh, templates. I think Microsoft's going to have to um, work pretty hard uh, to communicate this. I'm potentially butchering it, but I am going to be writing about it with uh, screenshots. You almost have to see it to to fully uh, to fully understand it. I think the final thing I'll talk about is some of the enhancements to Azure Arc. So Arc is a multi-cloud um, management tool that allows you to manage uh, containers and VMs across your own private cloud, AWS, GCP, Oracle, and even IBM cloud. And they're, they're now starting to call it Trust Fabric, which kind of drives me a little bit crazy, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's more marketing than, than anything. I get what they're trying to do here, uh, but they enhanced it with uh, vSphere, uh, new integration with Azure Stack HCI, uh, there were some Arc enabled data service announcements that I thought were were interesting, and and I think the while the rea the reality is that no customer goes all in on anyone's cloud. Okay, that's just it's kind of fantasy uh, at some point. So um, Microsoft figures it might as well be the uh, management plane for for all uh, workloads uh, in, in in the future. And I'll I'll leave I'll leave I think. You know, there's a ton I left for you. There's a ton and ton and ton, Pat, and we could go in so many different directions. And, you know, we've covered a few different things. Look, there was kind of, you mentioned Loop, which was, you know, the fluid framework, or I think they called it that for a number of years. And Loop is finally where they're, they're kind of turning this from an idea into something that's going to be productized. It's going to be marketable. It's super meta. Are there, um, too, are there too many of these, Daniel? Like, it hit this point where it's like, God, is there just, is this you know, going to be too complex for enterprises to, to integrate? Well, here's what's going on, right? Is in the end, enterprises need a, a, a digital fabric. They need a fabric, you know, kind of the way a cloud and, or, a, or the, the, the IT within a company needs, a, you know, a networking fabric. Like, you know, most people that are using an app don't care where the app is actually located. That's something that we care about because we're analysts and we like to talk <laughs> about this stuff. But in the end, it's like, does the app work or not? Can't, you know, and so it, it, there's a little bit of that. But what is going on, right, and it's very, very clear, um, is there's a, a few horse race that are basically trying to reimagine work. And so when you think about Loop, you're thinking about reimagining work. Pat, I remember us out at MWC a few years ago watching Halo. And this is going to help me trans, transition into the kind of another thing that was really big here. And we were watching, um, you know, 
um, HoloLens, not Halo, HoloLens. And we were watching, you know, how we could potentially work and manipulate and collaborate in an environment together. Well, we saw Mark Zuckerberg showing the metaverse the other day. And now, um, you know, Microsoft is talking about collaboration that transcends boundaries, right? And that's Mesh. So you got Mesh for Microsoft Teams. You know, we're going to go from meetings face to face to asynchronous. You got Viva, which got some enhancements, which is all about, you know, employee experience and work-life balance. And then you've got these asynchronous and then You've got Mesh, which is, a, is effectively, you know, going from the 2D to 3D meetings to be able to put us in spaces together to have us operating and collaborating inside these immersive spaces. So now you got Facebook building the metaverse for the consumers. you got Microsoft building the metaverse for teams and for meeting and immersive spaces. But what we do know is in the end, there's a ton of meeting fatigue. We need to do this better. Microsoft is trying to address that. So that's something that's going on there. Um, you've got, you know, cross-organization collaboration going on. You've got, you know, Teams Connect which is, you know, basically all about, you know, breaking down silos, making things simpler, uh, enabling companies, uh, you know, to have different teams uh, connecting across uh, channels in a more simple, streamlined way. Again, complex yet simple. This is all about this remote operating system for work. You're seeing Cvent now being integrated into the Teams platform, Pat. So here we are on StreamYard. We really like this platform. Well, Microsoft is going to have its own version now with events, with broadcast, with virtual green rooms, with Q&A. So you can see that Teams product, by the way, being thematic. Because um, what you even mentioned um, with Loop, it's a lot of it's about Teams. It's about collaborating. It's about being able to co-work within an environment. This is where everything is going. This is where it all ties together. Then you have collaborative apps where you've got partners like SAP and ServiceNow and being able to work in your Teams environment and see the, the SAP screen or see your ServiceNow workflow all in one place. And then, of course, now, guess what else they're doing? Streamlining the, the contact center experience. We've all seen how contact center sort of operates over here as one thing. And then you've got the service cloud uh, you know, or a cu my Dynamics 365 customer service. Well, in the end, we want a single streamlined uh, experience that includes teams, that includes service, that includes contact center building that here now as well. So what we basically have going on across the board is that Teams continues to become more and more the epicenter of the Microsoft uh, ecosystem. And now they're attaching everything, whether it's collaborating, whether it's creating, whether it's distributing and broadcasting, whether it's working inside of different applications, that's where this is all going. That's how I'm tying this all together. This is the future. If you make it about apps and about IT and about, um, individual solutions and complexity it does pat it becomes an absolute head scratcher i would pull my hair out but in the end the real question is what are you trying to do and do you in fact have a dynamic or a digital fabric that allows you the ultimate extensibility think platform and that's what i think microsoft was really trying to get across i think it got out there somewhat well and of course we didn't even mention a mountain of azure updates that are going on, but it really does still go back to that full stack. It's about Azure platform built on top, applications built on top of that, and then of course all the service layers. In the end, Microsoft wants to be able to get you everything you need end to end. And then, like I said, with the you know the ability to bring in those collaborative apps, whatever you don't get from Microsoft, they want you to use. You heard it in Microsoft. So yeah. that's what's going on. That's Ignite. That's where we're going. Rock and roll. No, I appreciate that, Daniel. You know, and I, I understand, you know, having Notepad available. I, I just can't <laughs> shake this. Can I, I'm just, I'm not going to let this go. Like, I totally get having, you know, OneNote inside of, you know, my Microsoft email program. I get it. You know, I get all of these things back and forth, but Loop is essentially an application, a new place to go. It needs to be called something uh, and calling it a canvas. I know I did that, but it has to be called something, you know, a uh, box uh, has, has that similar challenge, but they came out and actually called themselves something. And there's a category. It's like, what category is loop? I, I don't know work. yet. I don't know. Collaborative work, future okay. of work. Pat, well, let's let's call it digital transformation. <laughs> Listen, uh, I think you were one of the first analysts, if not the first analyst, to cite 
digital transformation. And there's as many people who hate it and who love that term, but, uh, you know, changing your enterprise to move quickly uh, is a good thing, regardless of what we want to call it. 